Kanban cards are used to help manage inventory in just-in-time manufacturing. So the Kanban cards, like you see here, show the name of the product, they show where the product is stored or who to contact to order more. I often include the lead time, so how long it will take between when you place the order for additional inventory and will it arrive. It also shows you how much um, inventory is typically held. So you see you have minimum reorder point and the quantity of the orders. So when we have a Kanban card, the way that it works is the Kanban card signals when you need to order some additional inventory. In a just-in-time manufacturing system, we pull the inventory just when we need it. So the card, as you see down here, is kept in a storage bin uh, with some of the inventory. So as you use up the inventory, at some point you hit the Kanban card. And this Kanban card then says, now here's time to order more. After the Kanban card, there'll be additional inventory. And that additional inventory is just enough uh, to meet your needs over the lead time. So the time between ordering additional inventory and when it arrives. So you can see here an example of a Kanban card and some of the pieces that are included in it. So supplier, where it's stored, uh, what it looks like, and so on. What we want to be able to do is determine where that Kanban card needs to be in our box of inventory. So how much extra inventory are we going to need and where is that Kanban card located? So to do this calculation, we're going to use this formula n equals d times t times 1 plus x divided by c. Now the idea here is that if we have excess inventory that's not being used up quickly, we should have a lower number for our Kanban card. If we are seeing that our production is delayed, we're seeing increased lead times, then we will need to have that Kanban card increase. That is, we're going to need to place the orders for additional inventory sooner rather than later. If we're not using up the inventory, then our order time, when we place the order for additional inventory, can be delayed until later. So let's assume, for example, that you have a lemonade stand. Okay, you buy lemon, you buy lemons, you squeeze them, you turn them into lemonade. Let's assume there are nine lemons in a bag. It takes three minutes to squeeze a lemon, and you need two lemons per bottle of lemonade. Now it takes one hour out of your eight hour work day to go get lemons from the store. And you have a general policy of 20% for your safety stock. So we want to figure out the calculation n equals d times t times 1 plus x divided by c. So we're looking at here is d is our average usage rate. In this case, there are eight hours that we work in a day. There are 60 minutes in those hours. Okay. And we know that it takes three minutes to squeeze a lemon. So if we squeeze lemons for eight hours a day, and we turn that into minutes, then we find that we could squeeze 160 lemons a day. Now we found our D. T is the average lead time for replenishing our container. So if we were to go to the store and get more lemons, it would take one hour out of that eight hour day. So it would take an eighth of a day. So now we have D, we have T. X is going to be our safety stock. That is, it's the extra inventory we're going to hold on hand. So notice we're going to take our demand that's in days. We're going to look at the total time it takes to go replenish our stock. So an eighth of that. So we're going to take 160 lemons, which is what we could squeeze in a day. We're going to take an eighth of that because if we go to replenish our stock, then 1 8 times 160 is how many lemons we're not squeezing. So we need to consider that fact. And then we need to look at, we want some extra safety stock, just in case. So not only do we want to make sure we have enough lemons on hand for the time we're running to the store, but we want to have one plus the 20%. So we want enough for while we're gone, plus an extra 20%. 
we're then going to divide that by the capacity of a standard container. So our, bag, our lemons come in bags with nine lemons in a bag. So this tells us then how many bags of lemons we're going to need in our inventory before we trigger that Kanban card. So let's do that calculation here. So we're going to take the 160 lemons per day times the 1 eighth of a day while we're replenishing our inventory. And then we have our 1 plus our 20 percent. And we're going to divide all of that by our 9 units per container. So if we do that calculation, we'll notice that we that 160 times 1 eighth, that ends up being 20 lemons while we are away getting more inventory plus a 20% safety stock. So we actually end up with 24 divided by 9. And that gives us 2.67. Okay. Now you can't have fraction of a bags, so we're going to have three bags here. And so we're going to have a Kanban card when we're down to three bags. So think about it as you have in your storage room, you have all of your lemons. As you use up your lemons, when they are down to three bags left of lemons, you are then going to see a Kanban card, which tells you now is time to go to the store and get more lemons. While you are away, let's say other people who work for your company will continue squeezing lemons and you'll have enough while you're gone to continue squeezing lemons plus an extra 20 percent. So that Kanban card is going to appear when you're down to three bags of lemons.